Nowhere is the ocean's power more evident than in the Pacific Northwest. In spite of this, over the past century, most coastal communities in Washington state have grown and developed, while beaches have been accreting, adding new land. Long Beach Peninsula has gained length and width. Sand trapped by jetties forms the foundation for towns and two state parks. Yet, as established as these shorelines seem, in fact, the ocean's edge is always changing. To me, it's really remarkable that here is a, a coastline that we talk about accreting and being really healthy beaches growing seaward, and yet the, one of the most rapid coastal erosion rates in the United States is in this same area at Cape Shoalwater. Since millennia, accretion and erosion have been part of the history of every shoreline, including southwest Washington. In recent years, a few erosion crises have threatened homes and communities up and down the coast, requiring multi-million dollar fixes that are temporary at best. These expensive crises posed a quandary for coastal communities and Pacific and Grace Harbor counties. Immediate decisions had to be made, yet there was no basic scientific data to offer guidance and perspective. So, together they sought federal and state funding for scientific research that could predict coastal change. As a result, a five-year coastal erosion study is underway, conducted by the State Department of Ecology and the U.S. Geological Survey in conjunction with local communities and other state and federal agencies. We're really trying to understand how the system's changed, how the beaches have grown out and why they're eroding now and where the erosion will go in the future. The study area covers the region occupied by Columbia River sand from Point Granville, Washington to Tillamook Head, Oregon. It's important that we study that entire region to understand the distribution of sediment and how, if you change the supply of sediment over time, what kind of effect that will have on beaches throughout the entire, entire area. The research will unearth a fundamental understanding of past and present coastal yeah. dynamics. As data is collected, it is developed into practical formats for land use decision making. Eventually, the research will contain a full technical body of knowledge to help predict the future shape of the coast, enabling local governments to plan how best to protect life and property. It's critical that the information that's obtained during this study is made available to the local communities and it's given to them in a format and in a way that they can understand it and use it and actually use it to make better decisions about managing the coast. This, scientists already know, that every beach is constantly changing. Every breaking wave moves the sand. The sliver of sand we call the beach is not the whole story. The actual zone of migrating sands includes inland dunes and reaches out to sea 15 to 18 miles, as deep as 300 feet. A dynamic geologic system. The geologic history of the study area is dynamic too. The Lower Columbia River is the ancient source of sand for Long Beach Peninsula and all southwest Washington beaches. From its mouth, sand moved northward, drifting onto headlands, shaping new lands. In this century, human-made jetties trapped sediments, building new landforms in places like ocean shores. So why are some areas now experiencing dramatic erosion? One hypothesis is that dams on the Columbia diminished the flow of sand to the coast. Northern beaches were being replenished by sand accumulated at Peacock Spit, but now that supply is greatly diminished.
Another hypothesis suggests that perhaps the coast has a long-term cycle of accretion, alternating with erosion. It's these kinds of questions the study aims to answer. For despite some human impacts, the shoreline remains a long, spectacular stretch of unimpeded beach that attracts people from around the state and places afar. So today, coastal communities find themselves at a crossroads. How to deal with imminent threats of erosion and plan for development while preserving coastal treasures. A closer look at some of the crisis areas reveals the extent of the problem and the kinds of answers the coastal erosion study might provide. One place in crisis is ocean shores. In October 1995, a swath of shore 30 feet wide, a thousand feet long, disappeared. Winter storms seemed certain to swallow a number of multi-million dollar condos. Losing half your property in virtually two, three months, uh, and then having the forecast that we're in the beginning of a cycle that it's only going to get worse, uh, really scared a lot of people. The eroding shoreline came as a shock because ocean shores had been accreting ever since the North Jetty was built in 1917. Hundreds of new acres added more than a mile's width of shoreline. To protect their property, adjacent condo owners paid more than a half million dollars to build a temporary wave bunker. In 1998, Extreme erosion at both ends of the structure led the city to declare a state of emergency. Fearful that the ocean would soon inundate the southern tip of ocean shores, the city has proposed extending the seawall over a thousand more feet. Besides structures such as these, several alternatives are being considered. Take no action, and it's believed many more acres would erode. Or replenish the sand but that would be a long-term commitment of supplying 100,000 cubic yards per year. Or construct a dune, all with unknown impacts on the shoreline. The reason why we came to this project. The main objective of the coastal erosion study is to provide coastal communities with data and models that can predict coastal change. We're studying the, the geologic change of the last 4,000 years to present and, and documenting how the beach has, has evolved over that long-term period. And then we're looking at the historical period to really map out the, the modern change. Um, we know that there's been dredging, there's been dams, there's been jetties, and they've caused a huge amount of change along the coast. And then we're also mapping out the seasonal change in the beach to put those active processes in context with historical trends of change. Studies of modern day coastal change include a cooperative effort with NOAA and NASA. These airborne laser surveys help identify seasonal and El Nino caused changes to the beach and shore face. Even more detailed and often repeated surveys are taking place using an amphibious mapping vehicle called the Clammer. All the data we collect is down to about two centimeter accuracy. And we know the distance between the antenna and the bottom of the wheels of the Clammer. And we're able to map basically where the Clammer drives. Typically we pick four kilometer sections. And here at Ocean Shores we, we go from where we are right now all the way to the, the uh, north jetty of Grays Harbor and we take data points the entire way. And then we come back and repeat basically what we just did, but we just go a little bit lower on the beach. And we take all that data, we th run it through a gridding program, and we're able to reconstruct a surface of the beach face. And then we go back some other time to the beach, and we drive that same area, and then we compare those surfaces, and we see where the beach is eroded and where it's accreted. Another coastal place in crisis the jetty breach in Westport, December 1993. This was a very dramatic and expensive erosion crisis. At high tide this morning, wind-whipped waves poured into what's now a 50-foot wide channel that's about 10 feet deep. It took yesterday's stormy seas just 30 minutes to carve it out. When the breach occurred, 
the main concern was is what were the long-term impacts? You know, how far is it going to go? When will it stop? You know, those questions were unanswered. Um, to us, the infrastructure was at risk. That's wa our water sewer, the commercial corridor. The community itself was a, in awe. You know, we had been concerned about it for years, but um, until it actually breached, it really brought us to attention as far as how are we going to deal with this. We didn't have enough data to, uh, uh, I'm talking we, I'm talking about engineers and scientists, to uh, make a fast conclusion what's going on and make uh, judgment. Uh, for example, this questions where is the sediment moving from north to south, from south to north, or even what the wave conditions or even current conditions uh, at uh, the South Chile. The Army Corps of Engineers agreed to fill the breach, but only because it became a federal issue of navigation. Otherwise, the local community would have had to pay for the $7 million repair. Worse yet, the 600,000 cubic yards of fill are considered only a temporary fix. Based on the knowledge we have from up north, from the experience there, from experience from being down here, tying that whole thing together and trying to solve these problems. Yep. Interpreting geologic change over the past few thousand years provides a framework for understanding processes active today. What we have here is a, a ground penetrating radar system. You can think of this as an x-ray into the ground. Um, what we're doing is just taking a, an x-ray, just like your body, we're seeing what's in the subsurface. That subsurface reveals a history of accretion and erosion. We'll find in Based on the GPR data, the scientists identify sites to be sampled. Ooh, that looks like good peat. Certainly does. Ew, it stinks. Yes, it does. Soil and wood samples collected from cores are dated. These dates and locations are translated back to maps. Their work reveals that every few hundred years, large earthquakes here cause portions of the coast to suddenly drop several feet. The shoreline shifts inland, which produces what are termed erosional scarps. Accretion rates can then be calculated based on what lies between successive scarps. These techniques are revealing the long-term geologic history of Southwest Washington. A new look at the past that can help predict the future. Washaway Beach has long been recognized as an erosion crisis spot. One of the fastest eroding shorelines in this hemisphere for the past 100 years. The erosion rate has been as much as 150 feet per year, posing an ongoing threat to State Highway 105 and the region's valuable cranberry bogs. We've uh, lost over two miles in my lifetime of land out there from where it used to be out there. And uh, well, there's been a number of efforts to try to do something about it and, and nothing really worked because of the depth of the channel. The latest effort to prevent erosion here has led to construction of an underwater groin intended to slow the current at a cost of $25 million. It, it looks like a very good idea to us. I mean, the, the public support for this project has been tremendous. Although, as with most coastal issues, it is hard to reach a consensus. Uh, it may work for a short time, but in the long run, I think it's just money wasted. Uh, it would be better to move the highway, buy the properties that are endangered, and, uh, and move them and let nature take its course.
Benchmarks installed throughout the study area serve as reference points for all data collected now and in the future. Scientists can return to the benchmark locations after a season or a major storm and see precisely how the beach has changed. Eventually, data from most facets of the study will appear in a Geographic Information Systems Database, GIS for short. GIS brings together historic data with current data, depicting everything from the growth of communities to the ever-changing shape of the coast. Beyond just changing, we're able to kind of put a pattern to it also. Uh, it looks like at uh, the early onset, about the 1850s, there's a large slug of sand down by the mouth of Columbia River that eventually we think migrated north, but you can start seeing some of these patterns as you go through the historical maps. Rather than just being able to measure erosion, we'll also be able to see kind of in a two-dimensional or three-dimensional way some of the processes that are happening with the sand actually physically moving uh, up the shore from the Columbia River and then south uh, when you go into Oregon. Fort Canby, one of Washington's busiest state parks, is another site of serious erosion. Scientists have documented a shoreline change here of over a thousand feet in the past century and a half. The last three years, it's, it's uh, started its erosion fairly extensively. We're losing somewhere around 200 to 300 feet a year. It has eroded our primary dune, which used to be uh, around 10 to 12 feet high. There is no primary dune left. This is one of the heavier used camping parks. We're, we've got some grave concerns about where this erosion is going, uh, where it's going to stop. We've got a uh, major campground of 180 sites that are about a mile away from this area now, a uh, mile up the beach, and uh, we're afraid that the erosion is going to get to those campsites. Because many influences of coastal change occur offshore, underwater, the Coastal Erosion Study is exploring the surface of the inner shelf. So it looks pretty good. It's milliseconds. About 400 milliseconds. Yeah, that's fine. High resolution side scan sonar data will give scientists a record of how Columbia River sediment has accumulated and moved along the inner shelf and a glimpse of the shoreline over time. There have been a number of sort of localized studies that have been done through the years, but never an overview. And that's one thing that this study is really hoping to contribute, and we really hope will be quite a significant contribution, is to get some feel for the variety of processes and the variety of geology that's going on out here. So as we address a local area, we have an understanding of the regional picture what the study does is it gives us the ability to analyze growth, decisions that we make today about where to build, how to build, such that 20 or 30 years from now, we're not looking back and saying what fools we were. That's the great thing about this study is it helps you gather that cumulative knowledge that makes your community a really special place to live in, not over one person's lifetime, but many, many people's lifetime. More of a straight shot. These are only part of the extensive research being conducted during the five-year coastal erosion study. Before this, only limited scientific and technical data existed. Now, the entire coastal system will be examined, along with its evolution over time. What changes have come to pass? In sediment supply, on the ocean floor, from earthquakes, on the beach, on the dunes, from wave patterns. For the first time, an information base will exist on these complex processes. Predictive models will be created and refined as coastal monitoring continues. All of this will help communities anticipate coastal change before it happens guiding long-term decision-making and the management of erosion crises, providing a new asset of understanding for living, working, and playing at Ocean's Edge. <laughs>